So one of the biggest downsides of buying a locked Intel CPU, even in 2018, is that you get this thing <laughs> included in the box. Now, this may be mistaken for a piece of scrap metal, but it's actually the stock uh, CPU cooler that comes uh, included with your CPU. Now, this thing is sufficient for the i3-8100 and 8300, but when it comes to the i5 series and even the i7 series, the i7-8700 actually ships with this thing, believe it or not. Um, it definitely is not sufficient. Now, uh, combine that with the automatic voltage parameters that your motherboard assigns, and you've got a recipe for disaster. And in the worst case, uh, your CPU may even be thermal throttling and costing you some performance. Now, although you can't modify the voltage parameters in the BIOS to correct this since they are locked CPUs, you can apply a voltage offset in Intel's XTU software and also a program called Throttle Stop. For the purpose of this guide though, we'll be using XTU since the UI is a lot more user friendly I think, and it also has a monitoring graph built in. Before we get started though, a quick briefing on what undervolting is and why you should consider it if you're running either a locked CPU or a processor which you're running at stock clock speeds. So the basics of undervolting are this, there are two variables that you should be concerned with and when it comes to your CPU, that's the clock frequency and the voltage referred to as vCore. Now with AMD's Ryzen CPUs and with Intel's unlocked CPUs like the 8700K, you can modify both of these in the BIOS and establish an overclock for better performance. However, if you're just running the CPU on auto settings, it's common that your motherboard will be assigning a higher than necessary voltage to keep all programs stable, which results in a higher than necessary temperature. We can though decrease the CPU voltage even with locked Intel CPUs and this is very useful for those wanting to run their systems as cool as possible and also for those with typically hot devices like laptops and tablets allowing them to boost higher and for longer, which improves their performance. I recently undervolted my Microsoft Surface Book 2 and my score in Cinebench improved from 664 to 747 and thermals in gaming were a few degrees better as well. Undervolting is also very useful for small form factor systems with otherwise power hungry processors that generate quite a lot of heat. So the locked CPU that we're going to be undervolting today is Intel's i5-8400, which is a six core processor with a boost clock of up to four gigahertz. And we're going to be locking that into a cheap H310 motherboard from ASRock. The i5-8400 does come with Intel's stock cooler as well. And that's what we're going to be using here. And in Prime95 with small FFTs tested, the CPU was sitting at a six core average of 88.7 degrees C after 10 minutes. And although it didn't thermal throttle, it did get pretty close with peaks at 91 degrees C. The vCore at these loads was not too bad for a H310 motherboard, I'll say, at 1.16 volts, but we can decrease that by a good amount. So the first thing that you'll need to do is download Intel's XTU software. This is a great piece of software which allows you to change the vCore for the majority of locked Intel CPUs, but it also has a neat monitoring section down the bottom, which also lets you know if you're running into any limits. Note that you can also use a software called Throttle Stop, as I mentioned previously, but the UI isn't as clean or easy to navigate for beginners. Now, before we start modifying anything, we want to download a stress test to test the CPU stability. I recommend Prime95 testing small FFTs as it puts the CPU under the most stress possible and generates the maximum heat. It may be overkill for most people though, so feel free to use something less demanding like IDA64 or a render program like Cinebench R15. All right, so let's go back into the Intel XTU software and we're going to modify this parameter here called core voltage offset. And it's exactly what it sounds like. It just takes the stock core voltage of your CPU and applies an offset. Now, since we're undervolting, we're going to be applying a negative offset and I recommend starting with an offset of negative 50 millivolts to get things started, and all CPUs should be able to handle this with no issues. Also make sure that the core voltage is set to default and not some static value, and this will allow the CPU to use a dynamic voltage rather than a static and a constant one. So hit apply and go ahead and stress test the CPU with the new vCore in action. You should notice a drop in temperature right away, but we're not done just yet. Keep decreasing that core voltage offset by around 10 millivolts at a time until the stress test crashes, indicating that the CPU is unstable. When that happens, you should have a pretty good idea of what the lowest stable vCore offset is for your CPU, 
and for our i5-8400 that was minus 140 millivolts. With this offset the i5-8400 dropped 12.4 degrees C in Prime 95 with an effective voltage of 1.02 volts and this landed us at a now very comfortable load temperature in Prime 95 of 76.3 degrees C. There is one problem though, if you restart your PC you'll notice that the vCore offset is no longer effective and annoyingly you'll have to reopen XTU, punch in the offset and hit apply to get it going again. There is a way that we can set it to run automatically though to make that vCore offset enabled whenever your PC is up and running. The first thing that you need to do is create a PowerShell script, so open the PowerShell ISE and copy and paste the script that I've left in the description down below and full credit to Reddit user TheBigBug for sharing this in the Surface subreddit. The script checks to see if the Intel X2 software is running and then changes the ID34, which is the core voltage offset, with the value in millivolts after V. In the default script that you'll find down below, it changes the value to 100 millivolts, but just change this value to the stable offset that you discovered earlier, and for ours, that was 140. Next, save the script to a location where it won't get deleted, and here I followed the big bugs instructions to create a separate folder in the boot drive called startup. Next, we need to get task scheduler to actually open the Intel X2 software in the background and run the script whenever your system is running. So click create task, give it a name, check run where the user is logged in or not, run with highest privileges, and configure for Windows 10. Next, go to the Triggers tab and create a new trigger which starts the task on startup. Hit OK and then go to the Actions tab now. And this is where we're going to tell the task to open Intel's XTU software. So click New, make sure the action is set to Start a Program, and then in Program slash Script, enter PowerShell.exe. In the Add Arguments field, copy and paste the arguments that I've also left down in the description, and are again thanks to Reddit user the big bug. This is going to open PowerShell in the hidden mode and run the script that we saved earlier. Double check to make sure the path matches the path of your script, otherwise it won't run. Lastly, head over to the Settings tab and make sure all of the following boxes are checked. Hit OK, enter your password, and your scheduled tasks should be good to go. Restart your system and double check that your vCore offset is still effective. And you can check this in a software like Hardware Monitor under the parameter IA offset. If it's not effective though, double check that your paths and conditions are all correct. So guys, I hope you found this helpful and if you've undervolted your CPU, let me know down in the comment section below. I find this really helpful for those who are running you know, power hungry CPUs in small form factor systems. Uh, with you know limited CPU core heights and things like that. And as we've looked at today, it's really effective for those who uh, otherwise have fairly power hungry, you know, i5s and i7s and are running the uh, stock cooler. As always guys, a huge thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already and I'll see you all in the next one.